Ladies and gentlemen, welcome back to Casual KL. Recording kind of early in the morning for me, so I may be a little uh, little lazy. Not having any drinks at this time. So hopefully it'll still be fun for everybody listening. And we got a long 14-fight uh, card here after having a week off after the Sphere. Sphere was dope. What would you think of the Sphere, Alex? Amazing. Wish I was there. I wish we got the tickets. I wish we, we just listened. And stacked up. That was a great, a, a great opportunity that we missed, but it was still good to watch. Yeah, it looked very good. Did you guys buy the pay per view? I actually did this time. I played the fifth. Okay. Yeah, it's. I mean, you, you could have gone somewhere fifth, to watch it. I guess the way I should have asked was like, did you see the the great version? Because yeah, if you're at a restaurant watching it or something, right? You're not seeing the good version. So, uh, dude, it was it was high level. Like I bought it and um. I think they were doing like 1080p or whatever it is. Like they're not doing like the normal streaming of it. It was high, high resolution and it looked fucking awesome. I kind of wish I was watching it at my house on my 65 inch. Um, but I was at my neighbor's watching it on his little 32 inch because, uh, you know, we just did it like that, I guess, but kind of fucked up there, but it was incredible, man. It looked like mortal Kombat levels and stuff. It was dope. So Really enjoyed that. Did not see Marab winning like that, but I guess that's how he wins. I know you called that. I did have Shevchenko. Didn't know it was going to be that boring. And um, yeah, just some good fights all around. Diego Lopes looked good. Um, I was surprised, even though I picked him, really surprised by Rebovic's performance. He looked great. So that was kind of, that's a guy to keep an eye on, man. It's going to be a fun. And then Yasmin Yar, Yui, man. We got to admit, she sucks. She sucks. She is not a good fighter. Um, second time. Yeah, we overrated her. Yeah, dude. I mean, she's highly overrated. Um, I understand like she's got good technique, but they talk about this Mexican chin. She does not have a Mexican chin. She's got like a Canadian chin or something. It's not, it's not working for her. So yeah, uh, never betting on her is a big favorite again. Had Denise Gomes the first time. Big fan of Deme Denise Gomes, but yeah, just not, not what I was expecting for that one. And then Raul Rosas kind of looks shitty too, to be honest. Anything you want to get into before we roll into this card? We got, like I said, 14 fights. One was just added like Sunday or Saturday. What I'm going to say is a lot of people lost a lot of money last week. So when you're unconfident on a card, guys, you just bet, bet less fights. You don't have to force action. Just bet what you're confident in. My most confident pick last week was Shevchenko. Hammered her. And uh, sometimes it's just all about hitting those small, confident spots, you know, and avoiding all these close decisions. And you kind of want to dodge some of these opportunities. And this is one of those weeks where I'm going to be dodging a lot of uh, weird opportunities and scary fights. But with that being said, there's a couple spots I like as well. Yeah, I like uh, a few dogs on this card, actually. I think it's a I think this is a fairly easy card. I'm, I'm very confident in the main event where I'm going to be. I will take the first fight of the night as I usually do. You know, it's a it's a pretty cool matchup. I think there, I don't think there's any really bad fights on this card. First fight of the night, Bellagioki versus Chris Duncan. Chris Duncan's a dog here, I think, still at this point, and might be climbing to a bigger dog. Um, I actually like him here, though. Like, I I think that Duncan is it, people shit on him for some reason. I think he's actually really good. And I know Bellagioki's coming in and he's kind of, uh, you know, the new guy at this weight class here. But I mean, Timmy Kwamba, I don't really care too much about that win. Dylan Salvador, I'd never heard of this dude before. This is who uh, Oki fought on the Contender Series. I don't remember that performance, to be honest. So it probably wasn't too crazy. He did get the first round uh, knockout. I think Duncan's just going to have the counter strike and I think he's going to be there to um, just kind of take advantage of Oki's more wild style. And uh, Duncan will come through clutch here, I think, but it'll probably be a decision. So give me Duncan decision for the first fight of the night. What you got? I agree with you on the over. I like that pick, actually. I do agree with you that there's value on Duncan as well. I think the line's a little bit wide here. Minus 200 on Oki. Yeah. I'm going to have to agree with the over here. I do think that we see this fight going the distance. Bookies also agree. With that being said, this all depends on whether or not Duncan can get takedowns, in my opinion. I got to disagree with you. I don't think Duncan can win minutes on the feet against Oki. I think we're going to see a lot of clinching. We're going to see a lot of positions 
stalemate positions we're going to see this in this fight. And I think that's the only way that we see this fight get extended. I think Duncan can get hurt on the feet. I think it's going to be slow paced because they do both have more of a counter strike style. So I think it could be a little bit slow paced on the feet, but I think that jab of Oki is going to get through. I think that's going to be the minute winner here. I'm going to go Oki decision, but I, I obviously do not see any value on this. If I'm going to have any bet on this, it's going to be on the over one and a half, maybe even the over two and a half. Okay. Okay. So yeah, you got Oki and you're going decision. Correct. Perfect. We'll see what Jared has. Once he sends him in, I can just rattle him off at the end here, but you got the first chick fight of the night. That's usually, uh, that's usually you, I think. You get a lot of the girl fights. Huh? When I'm losing these girl fights, usually by like a split decision, if I'm honest. Yeah, like the Angela Hill one. Uh, you know, it's rough. I, she posted a meme the other day because she loses so many split decisions when uh, it's like her fans, Angela Hill fans, when they hear it's a split decision <laughs> and like they already know she lost. So, like their face was like he's all pissed off and stuff. But um, this is a cool matchup too. Short notice for Cavalcanti. Not maybe not too short a notice, but definitely a quick turnaround. Nora Cornhole, as I like to call her, Nora Corn Cornoli versus uh, Jacqueline Cavalcanti. Like I said, fought just a couple weeks ago, uh, about a month, five weeks by the time fight rolls around, I think. And uh, beat Josiane Nunez, and now she takes on a striker in Cornhole. What do you got here? So it's the rematch that we all asked for. Oh, yeah. Um, I don't know if he caught the first fight, but it was a good fight. Uh, Jacqueline dominated and almost got a finish in that fight. Could have been finished. Depending on the ref, outcome could have been different. So I was back and forth. I was actually on Nora when I first saw this fight. I didn't really like Jackie on short notice. But after reviewing the tape and watching and seeing that they fought each other and watching that fight over... It's hard not to go with Jackie here. It's hard not to go with Jackie even to lean a finish here. Um, the over-under, extremely wide, minus 350 on the over two and a half. I almost see value on um, a Jackie finish here. I think the safest bet on this fight would be Jacqueline finish only. Yeah, I like that. Because, you know what, we're in France. You're going to trust these judges in a close decision. That's nope. just the safe way I would take it. I'm going to go Jacqueline wins by third round knockout, but I don't want anything to do with the judges on this card in France. Yeah, I like that call on the finish only. That's a great look because, yeah, like you said, um, I'm surprised that Jacqueline beat uh, Zara Farron. I mean, not because she shouldn't have won that fight, but because they are so biased there like they're very proud of their people Zara Farron you know she's not the best um mm. she went over to Aries I actually bet against her when she had her debut back in Aries and uh she got choked out by some chick I'd never heard of I never bet I never never knew who that girl was I just saw Zara Farron was fighting and I faded her and that works even on the Aries FC level so um not not a great competition level for her in the UFC so far because Jos Josiana Nunez is not good either in my opinion so uh, you notice how much nicer I am when I'm not drinking. I'm not. I'm not saying they suck. I'm saying you know they're just not that great. Um, you said something, but you're muted there. I was gonna say, um, how lucky did we get? Did I get on that uh, Irene Aldana finish only last week? Huh? That was an absolute gift. By the yeah, judge, by the that, doctor. We yeah we forgot about that. It was a uh, from a clash of heads. So maybe that's why they let that continue. But that was the worst cut I've ever seen in the UFC, man. Other than maybe like that one where the dude's ear almost fell off. That was the worst, worst cut I've seen, man. What was his name? Ramiz Brahimaj. I watched that live. That was crazy. Yeah, man. It was like just hanging on by a piece of skin. It was disgusting. And that dude's tough for continuing to fight, man. But uh, yeah, uh, nasty cut there. And and as far as my pick on this, man, I I totally agree with that bet from what you're saying, the finish only for Jackie. That's a nice look. Nora's striking's good, man. She's got good counter striking, uh, not a ton of power, even though she has a lot of knockouts, man. So maybe I'm, I'm, you know, misremembering her power. She does have uh, one finish and one decision in the UFC. But if you believe in MMA karma, um, Jocelyn Edwards absolutely beat her last time they were in, in France. If you watch that fight. 
So I got to go with Jackie here. It's a quick turnaround. I don't like that a lot, but um, I think she's meaner. I think she's got what it takes to kind of push this and to make it lopsided to where she could even get that decision. But uh, yeah, women's fights, they a lot of times end in split. And in those cases, it's kind of tough to go with the uh, the foreigner in this case, which is Jackie from Portugal. So yeah, I'm going to go, I'm going to go Jackie decision just because I think it's probably the most likely outcome, but that finishes live. And I think that's just like, that's a solid bet. Like if you're trying to be responsible with your bets, you get your money back. If it goes to decision, whether Jackie wins or not. Um, and if I'm not mistaken, if, if Jackie were to get finished, you would lose that bet. Correct. Yeah. Okay. The so, only way you lose that is if she gets finished. Yeah. Which I don't see happening. So that's a safer bet for sure. Uh, third fight of the night, Daniel Barres versus Victor Altamirano, Victor Altamirano, kind of a goofy dude, but, um, I like him. I like his weird, uh, like when he does that really corny, like fist pump, like he's a superhero in like the fifties or something. It's pretty sweet. I like it. Um, all these fights that Moran, that, uh, Altamirano has lost. He's been close in from what I remember. I, I'm not going to lie. I didn't go back and watch all of these, but this is a near even fight. I think Baraz could get bet up to more of a favorite. Um, I don't know if you have the lines handy on you right now. You can correct me if I'm wrong, but I, I see Altamirano closing as a dog. You got him there. That is correct. He is currently closing as a dog, but it's almost an even Steven fight. I see him as the favorite all on both sides, to be honest. Yeah. So, yeah, I mean, I got to go Victor Altamirano here. I think he's got, I mean, he's got the chin. He's shown that. He's got cardio like crazy. Berez, I don't think, unless I'm thinking of someone different, I don't think Berez has the best gas tank. Um, Altamirano is definitely going to have him in the in the gas tank area. He's a better wrestler. I think he's got him pretty much beat everywhere in Berez. So, yeah, give me Altamirano decision. I hate betting all these decisions, but these new gloves, I, I really do believe that the new gloves have kind of like added to the the lack of finishing. So. Give me Altamirano decision. Um, kind of see a lot of decisions on this card so far. Uh, what do you think about this matchup, though? Uh, this is a tough one. Uh, definitely one of those spots where I would wait, live bet, try to get both sides. Um, I do like Daniel early. Victor's more of that slow starter. Has good cardio, though, and he's a great comeback fighter, too. I feel like every fight I see him losing, he comes back somehow and gets a finish or gets the gets the judges all in his side. He's a tough guy to bet against, to be honest. But I just got to... Looking at the over-under here tells me all I need to know. Minus 300 on the over two and a half. Like I said, trying to stay away from these fights that go to a decision. I'd rather find a different way to bet it. Definitely staying away from this fight. Like I said, I'd wait see how the first round looks and then find a spot to live bet on this fight but gun to my head for a pick i'm gonna go with daniel gets a decision i think anything close they'll give him his first ufc win here okay barres you're going decision huh okay um another chick fight for you aylin perez versus daria zeliaznikova i'm gonna go with um, pretty interesting fight, man. I, I can't really stand Aylin Perez, but she's got a good style for like winning fights. Um, what do you think about this matchup here? I think Marab blessed her with that, uh, with that ass slap. Yeah. At the end of uh, UFC 306. I, I think she's one of the easiest picks on the card. I see her line going up. I think she's at minus 250, uh, 250, 260 range, and she's going up to 275. I see it closing at 300, maybe even higher. I think she's yeah. got a easy game plan here. Just takedowns, car, um, clinch, pressure, and work on that cardio because typically she doesn't. She hasn't been looking good in that third round, even though she shut me up in her last fight. But I would love to see her get it done early, too. To be honest, I, I honestly see a lot of the girls getting it done in this card. I'm going to go with Aylin gets a ground and pound knockout. I'm going to say round two. <laughs> I think round one's going to be a little bit competitive. But I, I think Aylin can get it done. She's gotten it done in the past. And I think she's 
the rightful favorite here. A little bit of a mismatch. Let's see if Daria can stop the takedowns and keep it competitive. But even on the feet, I think it's a 50-50 fight. I'm going to go Perez gets that finish. Okay. Yeah, I've got nothing to add to that. I even have the same round and the same method, ground and pound knockout. Uh, it just makes sense, man. You know what I mean? Like, that doesn't mean they were right. If, if Jared was on here and he saw it the same way, I would have to change my pick. Because when we all agree on girl fights, we're wrong. So hopefully Jared will come in and he'll say, like, a uh, decision for Aylin. Because, yeah, he's going to pick Aylin. There's no reason to pick. Uh, Thanks, Yasmin. <laughs> yeah. So it, it's just, it's one of those... It's one of those fights. I do think it is kind of a mismatch. I think that the UFC does like Aylin and um, they're not fighting in Vegas. So like the, the whole risk of like the, the, the judges not liking that style that Aylin's going to bring, that's not going to matter. Even if it does go the distance, right? These judges in Vegas seem to really hate wrestling and that, that boring grappling stuff. So yeah, it's kind of a boring style. It's very Morab like um, she gets like, I think she averages 10 takedowns or 10 attempts a fight, definitely 10 attempts and she gets about half those. So, um, yeah, just the, the rinse and repeat takedowns, I think is going to be efficient for her here. Um, I think about it, Montserrat, if Montserrat Rendon is taking you down three times in 15 minutes, was it even in 15 minutes? Yeah. In 15 yeah. minutes, if, if Montserrat Rendon can take you down three times, Aylin Perez will take you down and keep you down. Well, Monster at Rendon is very top heavy. I don't know if you've noticed. So she can lean on these girls and just take them down. Um, but my thing is that there's a huge size difference compared to her and Perez. In my opinion, they're oh, not yeah. even in. The, they're in a whole different class. Well, Monster at's real tall, and I was making a boob joke there. That's why she's top heavy. She's got massive cans. Monster at does so that she can just lean on girls and they'll they'll go over. But uh, yeah, I, I mean, in all seriousness, you're right. If Monstrat's able to do that a couple of times, um, Aylin's going to just work this girl on the ground. So, and and she she does that top control. She seems to be uh, position over submission. So that kind of opens up that uh, that ground and pound. And I just don't see she doesn't really work for many submissions at all, from what I've seen. Um, she likes to kind of like you know drown the opponents on the ground and whatnot. So. Cool. We both got Perez ground and pound TKO. That sub is live, even though I said, you know, she's not going to go for that, but you never know. And I think that, uh, Zelyaznikov or however you say it has some MMA karma coming back to her. I'm a big believer in that. So, um, yeah, we got the fifth fight of the night here. Uh, Taylor Lapalus versus Vince Morales and, uh, cool matchup, especially for short notice. I'm not going to talk about this one too much because I'm not a fan of Laplace's style. I don't like that French style, that Savat style where it's just point fighting, but it is effective and these guys are good at it. So I'm, I'm taking Laplace here, even though he's probably, I mean, he is a pretty big favorite. Um, I just think that he's going to just outpoint this dude, uh, Vince Morales, and he's going to make it look pretty easy like he tends to do. Not a fun fight, but um, yeah, I see Lapalus just outpointing and and getting a, a unanimous decision since he's in front of his French crowd. So yeah, give me Lapalus decision. What do you got? I agree with you hundred percent. It's just I'm worried that Vincent knows how to keep these fights close, and it's another one of those fights on the card where it's most likely going to a decision. But this is one of those spots where. I'm a little bit more confident going on the hometown guy. He's definitely going to get anything close in my opinion, but it's hard to find value on him at minus what? 350. I guarantee you even betting him by decisions, probably negative money too. favorite yeah. money on Taylor by decisions. Just a horrible bet. Definitely another stay away from me. There's no opportunity to find an EV position here so taylor decision is the bet maybe you could find value on betting him in parlaying it with the over in one and a half maybe you get it to something where it's parlayable in my opinion but that's the only way i would target it other than that i would recommend you guys stay away yeah i didn't realize vince morales has been in the ufc so long he's got eight fights he's three and five the competition level he's fighting is pretty solid though um i guess he got the boot after he lost to miles Johns and Jonathan Martinez back to back. And then, um, you know, went to uh front front street fights, which I've never heard of. And then risen, um, tough enough 
United Fight League. So he's just bouncing around regional scenes. And uh, he's collected four wins, including a belt by Peruvian necktie, which is pretty dope. You don't see that that often in United Fight League. So, I mean, the guy's well-rounded. He has a lot of pressure, too, from what I do remember of his fights. So that is something that Laplace may not like because um, he does like to keep the fights clean, but he's good at doing that. So I just see it kind of working out that way. And here's another way you could target that fight is Vince usually comes out hard. Vince is usually winning round one on the judges. Typically wins round one, uh, at least a round against every opponent. He's It's not often he's getting 30-27. So even a plus three and a half on Vince, maybe if you can get that at like plus 200, that wouldn't be a bad idea to take. Yeah, no, I agree. Um, yeah, after that first round, it it will be interesting to see where he's lying. But I'm sure to your point too, the lap list by points is probably minus 200, minus 180, something like that. It's not going to be a huge difference from his money line. So, you know, assume like 100 to 200 points difference from wherever his money line closes is what I would think. Um, next fight here is yours. And this is actually a, I, I think this is a mismatch as well. Ludovic Klein versus Roosevelt Roberts. Um, I think there's one answer to how this fight goes, but there, I mean, one winner, but, uh, what do you think about this matchup? Wide line. It's never, no offense to, I, I know you hate when I say that, but no offense <laughs> to the line makers here, but minus 900 on Klein is outrageous. Um, he's definitely fell short for us in the past. I can remember that Nate Landwehr fight. He gassed out in round three as a huge favorite. Love to see it. I had Nate Landwehr. I've been pretty good on Ludovic Klein fights, but this isn't one that I would like to target at minus 900. I think it opened up at minus seven. Definitely staying away. They force you to take a prop. Just yeah. like the lap fight, the way I would target this, because they, the bookies actually think there's a finish in this fight. The yeah. under two and a half is minus 170 that leads me to believe that if you want to take Klein and over one and a half you'll probably get that at minus 110 in that area that's the only way i would take ludovic it's just to pray that he takes it easy on roosevelt outpoints him for a couple rounds but that that's hard because roosevelt we're bagging on roosevelt getting better and right. i think he has but in the grappling department, I don't think he's gotten better in the in the striking department. So if you're going to target this fight, maybe go Luda under one and a half, Luda over one and a half. But I'm going to go. I'm going to go Ludovic decision. I think we see a little bit of grappling. I think we see a, a well-rounded game plan from Klein. And I think Roosevelt's going to play it safe. And he's going to survive a lot of situations as well so not confident on this fight i'm confident on ludovic klein winning but just it's hard to pick a prop here so ludovic decision and that's uh gonna be my official pick but good luck trying to parlay that minus 900 yeah that's a good look kind of going the uh like almost fading the public without fading the the side because um yeah i, I see a finish coming here i i think it's pretty straightforward i think it happens in round one Ludovic Klein knockout round one, just while they're, I mean, it could happen quick. The, the I had this pulled up because this is a concerning <clears throat> point. If you're on the Roosevelt side, there's no contest to Kevin Kroom. Uh, Kevin Kroom won that fight, but it was overturned because he was smoking weed, which we don't care about that anymore. Uh, they never should have in the first place, but that would have been Kevin Kroom's only UFC win. So, you know, Kevin Kroom fighting a BKFC now. Um, he wasn't good at the UFC level. He just wasn't. I mean, the, the, and this is the only guy that he beat. I don't remember how that fight went. Do you remember if Kroom like knocked him out or was it a decision? What happened? It was quick. I remember it was super quick. I bet Kroom in that fight, he was like plus 300. Um, Roosevelt just was not reliable. And he, uh, yeah, he got a quick guillotine choke in like the first minute. Okay. But ever since then, he's gotten better. Uh, Roosevelt's found to be durable. I mean, he lasted almost three rounds with a, uh, Ignacio Bahamundes and look how great he looked at UFC 306. He's just one of those young guys who came into the UFC and he's growing in the sport. So every single fight, he is probably going to get better. I think we're going to see a little bit of heart from him and I think he's going to survive, but I think Klein's going to style on him. Oh yeah. Yeah. It makes sense. Um, 
yeah, that's what I was kind of getting at at the beginning there when I was like, yeah, it's pretty straightforward. One way this this ends, and the one way I ends is it, it, one way it ends is just seeing uh, Klein winning. But how does he get it done? That's the that's the confusing part. He could catch him in some kind of sub. I just see an early finish here for Klein. So um, I think that that minus one seventy or whatever you said, I think that makes sense. But fading the books and and fading the public sometimes works real well. So good luck on that. Uh, this is another mismatch for the uh, sixth or seventh fight of the night. I'm not sure where we're at, but uh, Omar Sai versus Dawoon Jung. Dawoon Jung probably getting kicked out of the UFC after this. Um, this will be a, his fourth fourth loss. Uh, I haven't been impressed by these South Koreans lately, man. They haven't been doing great at all, and um, you know they're all kind of trying to follow in the Korean zombies' footsteps a little bit here. But uh, the last South Korean I've, I've really seen do well, I I mean, I can't even tell you. Like, uh, getting choked out by Carlos Olberg is not a good look at all. I mean, Carlos Olberg's a strict kickboxer. So it seems like Jung is one of these guys that that finds a way to lose. The odds reflect it. On Tapology, it's showing minus 500. I'm sure Sai is going to close like minus 700 or more by the time this this uh, gets closer. And... um. Yeah, I think Cy probably knocks him out again in round one. I see a quick finish here for Cy, who is undefeated. I mean, I think I think the UFC is trying to turn this dude into a star. So, um, you know, fighting in front of his French crowd, I think he's uh, fired up, goes out there and gets that early knockout in round one for Cy. Uh, what do you got? Broken down perfect. We get the broken prospect versus the UFC's brand new toy. Lines wide here. Minus five hundred, hard to hard to lay the juice on a guy with just one UFC fight, but it is easy once you look at how young Jung has declined. To be honest, the the level of competition has gone up, but he hasn't risen to any has hasn't risen to the occasion once in his last three fights. Um, he let me down against Jacoby. I had the over in that, and his chin gave out on me. I bet him against Clark. He lost, and I faded him against Elberg and finally started hitting against him. So I do like Umar here. It's just hard to f- pick a prop because Jung's got pretty good takedown defense. So how's he going to – I see this fight going a little bit longer. And I'm going to say Sai gets a second round – late second round finish. I'm going to say it's a ground and pound. Yeah, I like that ground and pound look too. Cause it, he, I, I meant to say too, he what he is a big wrestler. Sai is right. Um, Devin Clark's a wrestler too, but I don't remember him shooting many takedowns in that fight. And obviously, Dustin Jacoby, kind of a one dimensional kickboxer. The Jacoby loss doesn't look great on paper these days, but that was back in 2022 uh, when Jacoby was definitely better. And um, that Olberg fight was a year ago. September 9th of 2023. That's a long time for, you know, primary striker to come back after a year off. These strikers tend to not look great. Um, Wrestlers can pick right back up where they left off, but strikers kind of need that time to find their, their, their style again and their, their range and all that stuff. But yeah, I think this is Cy all day. Next fight, Iwan Kutalaba is still around somehow, which is wild. Uh, very entertaining fight, though, man. I, I, I always get excited to see his fights because someone's going down. Someone's getting knocked out. I think that's why they keep him around. They'll give him a soft matchup every now and then, like this Tanner Bozer fight for him. Um, he probably should have beat Felipe Lenz as well. Didn't get knocked out in that one, so that's good. But, um, yeah, this is yours, I think. Um, you can take it either way. Who do you got between the Hulk and uh, – Ivan Urslan, who does hit really hard. Tough fight. And uh, back-to-back fighters who might be out of the UFC. We got two guys back-to-back fighting for their jobs. And according to the lines, according to the bookies, they think Kutalaba is going to keep his job. Hard to hard to lay minus 125 on Ian Kutalaba. And after doing tape, it was even harder to do. Oh, yeah. Um, I really like the under here. I think both of these guys, guys' styles will lead to a finish, and the bookies agree. We haven't seen a Kunta Laba fight set at over one and a half in a few fights, in my opinion. So under one and a half at minus 140 is probably the best bet on the on this fight for me. 
picking a fighter in this is really just feels like a coin flip. They both got a shot. I think they're both going to go out here and swing. It's going to be a barn burner, in my opinion. I kind of liked Ivan a little bit more. I think he's a little bit more hungry. And I think he's going to be the guy who's getting paid less to show up at this fight. So yeah. I think he's going to be a little bit more motivated to get the win bonus, too. So I'm going to go Ivan gets a round one knockout. Not super confident in this fight. I, I, if you're going to play this, I would take the under two and a half, the no distance as well. I think the no distance is pretty good at, uh, it might be minus 250, minus 300. So that's actually a good parlay piece. Sweet. Yeah, I like the, uh, I do like that under, but I'm going to kind of be a little contrarian here because I think Ewan comes out there and I think he gets back to his Sambo. Um, just because that's, you know, again, they're not in Vegas. He doesn't need to be too impressive. He just needs to get a win here. And I think even with a loss, I, I don't think that they cut him. He's six and nine and one with one draw um, in the UFC. And I mean, he's never gone on like a run. He's never had like three, four fights that he's won back to back at this UFC level, unless I missed something. Um, yeah, he's gone on a two fight win streak and that's it. So he's never, he's never gotten a streak together. I think the UFC just likes his style. He's losing to good guys. He's beat. Good guys and Khalil Roundtree Jr. I mean, he's fighting <laughs> Alex Pereira pretty soon here, which is pretty wild. Um, so yeah, I mean, give me give me Ewan here. I hope that more money comes on on uh, Ivan Urslan, just because people are concerned about Kutalaba's chin. I see this kind of closing as a pick'em. To be honest, I don't know where's it at right now. Kutalaba minus one twenty five. Okay. So yeah, I mean, if more action comes in on Ursuline, this could be real close to a pick 'em, and I would like that. Uh, so I am waiting, of course, to bet on that. But uh give me Uwan, uh Ewan, however the hell you say his name. We'll call him the Hulk. Uh give me the Hulk KO round three. Uh this goes against everything that I really think happens. But uh yeah, Ewan KO round three, man. Just being different. Guy's so unpredictable, it's hard to get a good good read on him. But um here we have a weird matchup, I think. This is uh, Ferris Ziam, one of the most boring fighters. Like, I don't know. This dude's fights suck. But he has that same style, the Savat point fighting. He's taking on Matt Frivola, who's the opposite of that. Frivola comes forward and just swings. He's going to put a ton of pressure on Ziam. But uh, I think that that boring style works for these guys. Ziam's good at doing it. I, I hate picking Zion, but I'm going to pick him by decision. Um, Frivola does gas out after a round and a half or so because of that pressure. I think he's going to try and get him out early. I think Zion just kind of weathers that early storm, moves out of the way, backs up a ton. And then when Frivola's a little tired, he can we work his game, come back late, probably drops the first round. But uh, give me Zion to win by decision like he tends to do. What do you got? Been back and forth at this fight. Been back and forth. It's hard not to go with the younger guy who's improving, has the better chin. But I, I like Frivola here. I really do. I think the vet gets it done. I think his camp has the momentum too. You know, his camp just got a championship belt as a huge upset. And now he's going into someone's backyard as an underdog, as a better wrestler. I think he could even keep it close standing as long as his chin holds up. He's probably got the power advantage as, as well. He might not have the durability advantage. But at dog money, it, it's really hard not to go with Favola here. I, I hate any close decision. I do think this fight is more likely to go the distance, but I just think Favola is going to be the more active guy. This man just went to a split decision against Puelas. In my opinion, Favola can do everything Puelas does but also can hit like a truck and also can strike a little bit better than Puel is. I'm sorry. Did I, I'm insulting by saying a lot better. Yeah. He can actually strike. So I, I think we're getting a gift on here. You know, I think some of the trends, like the six year difference that has a 65% win ratio. I, I think some of those are affecting the odds here. And you can't blame it. The trends are the trends. But I like the older guy here. I'm going to go with the vet, Frivola. I think he has multiple ways he can win. I think he's going to win in the pressure. I think he's going to mix it up. I think he's going to get takedowns. Wouldn't even be shocked to see this man get a sub. 
as we've seen fair is get sub three times before i think this is definitely one of the french guys on the card to lose and i'm gonna go for vola i really want to pick sub i want to pick sub round one so bad i'm gonna do it sub round one let's go well i've got some good news for you you said sub round one for favola jared is on cornell by decision so we like our we like our Jackie bet there. Uh, that's not because we want to fade Jared because Jared's Jared's like Hansel. He's so hot right now, but we can't all agree on the fucking chick fights, man. So just to run through his picks up to where we're at right now, uh, Jared has Duncan by decision, Cornell by decision, Altamirano by decision. Um, he skips here. Oh, uh, Daria knockout round two. Um, Morales by decision, Klein by knockout in round one. Um, so he's agreeing with me on that quick finish there. Sai by decision, which is interesting. Uh, Kutalaba knockout round one. And uh, where are we? Where did we end here? Favola. So yeah, he's got D uh, Zion by decision too. So seeing eye to eye on a lot of those different in some key spots. We like seeing the difference on the uh, on the girl fight there. So. That was our ninth fight. We still got five more to do. Um, this is going quicker, obviously, because we don't have all three of us here. But it's a good matchup. I, I forget who took that last one. You can just have this. Morgan Charrier versus Gabriel Miranda. Seems like another mismatch to me. Um, but I, I'm, I'm interested to see what you think. Miranda's very good on the ground, man. Like this guy, this last time out when he got that sub in round one against Shane Young, I'm pretty sure we were all on that pretty heavy. Uh, just because we, I mean, that's, that's how this dude Miranda wins. So, um, yeah, the, I, I've had some good luck betting this dude. I did bet on him against Benoit St. Denis because I didn't know who Benoit St. Denis was. I think that was Benoit's like second fight after getting his shit pushed in by Tiago, whoever he fought. Um, that was his first fight. I mean, I don't know how he didn't get finished there, but it showed his toughness and, uh, it's an interesting matchup here, man. I don't understand too, before you go. I don't understand Morgan Sherry's record, 19, 10, and one. He's way better than that. I mean, he is definitely the best 19, 10, and one fighter in the world, hands down. But uh, what do you think about the matchup? Who wins? Miranda looked good at 145, huh? Old guy cutting up that, cutting down to that extra yep. 10 pounds, and he still looked good and kind of shocked everyone. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, Tough to go. He's definitely going to be the bigger guy here. Morgan's kind of small, even for featherweight. I like him. I lost against him on Shepe in his last fight. He let me down. You had Shepe in that fight. That was a good pick. I love Shepe. Uh, it's tough. If I, I know you guys. I know Jared likes the over. I don't know how you're feeling on this, but I, I kind of like the no distance. I like a finish in this fight. I think Miranda can get hurt on the feet especially cutting that extra weight. We really haven't seen him eat damage at 145 yet. So I'm curious to see that. And I'm also don't think Morgan's as good in the BJJ department as Gabriel. So that double method, you know, Morgan by KO, Gabriel by sub is definitely something I'm eyeing. I'm eyeing the no distance in this fight. Gun to my head, I'm going to take Morgan gets a round two knockout the gabriel's gonna get a little bit tired gas out not find anything maybe getting a couple submission attempts but not seal them up in the second round that gas thing's gonna wear down fail hey, round two huh i like that um jared here has morgan by decision um not a bad pick either because gabriel he if he has the cardio at 145, he can survive a beating for three rounds on Morgan. It's just I, I don't think he's got three rounds at 145. Sorry, I was filling up, filling up my water here. We also got to look at it. Benoit Saint Denis isn't Morgan, too. Right. Right. But and he's five round with him, and that that speaks a lot for itself. Yeah, I think that uh, Benoit's been just getting better and better each fight, though. Now, you know, he did just beat the shit out of Dustin Poirier and then get knocked out in round two. But I, I tend to believe he had staff in that fight, man. I really do think that he did because he hasn't shown those cardio issues in the past. 
I, you know, Dustin Poirier is my favorite fighter, but he would, he, in all like normal conditions, I think if uh, Benoit didn't have any staff, I think that he probably works Dustin there. He's just, he, he's got such a well-rounded style. I'm excited to talk about his fight later, but um, yeah, Charrier, you know, even though he's one of these French dudes, he doesn't have that boring style. He doesn't have the point fighting style. He's, he's willing to go out there and, and get or get got. Um, and I think, I think he goes out here and he gets Miranda out of there fairly early. He probably does have to weather some of that, you know, grappling a little bit. Um, the, the round one Miranda sub is live. It's very live. I think, you know, he can, he can catch anybody in this stuff, but, um, I think Morgan's good enough to know if, if you're just a one dimensional jujitsu guy, like Miranda is that doesn't work that well anymore. You know, it, it used to like, look at Poyas, look at, Look at these guys that just go out there and try and use jujitsu. Bright uh Bryce Mitchell. That I mean, that didn't work very well against Josh Emmett, who we thought was kind of fading. So yeah, give me the striker, give me the more entertaining guy. A lot of people call him like the the French version of Sean O'Malley because he does the weird hair stuff and he's he's got that cool style and and uh, fan friendly style. But I think that Morgan probably gets the knockout in round two. Same thing you said. It it does just make sense. It could come later, could come in round three. Um, but yeah, I see a finish here for. Charrier. Um, moving on up. Kevin Jusse versus Brian Battle. This is a dope fight. Um, very different styles. Jusse does kind of have that boring style. He does get finishes every now and then. But uh Brian Battle is uh a wild, he's got a wild style, man. High pressure, um, super fun to watch. He's an entertaining guy, loves to say, you know what I'm saying? I mean, this dude says, you know what I'm saying, so damn much. Um but I mean, he, he is very good and he, he seems to have like a little bit of a career resurgence. If I remember, he wasn't doing too great a while ago. Um, no, I guess he, he's always been pretty damn good. He just hasn't, hasn't, uh, fought the greatest level of competition up until he faced Urbina. Who's not awesome, but you know, decent, decent fighter. Trey Sean Gore, I thought was a lot better than he actually is. Um, he lost to Renat. That's not a horrible loss, but. It looks weird because Renat doesn't really seem to have that killer instinct. Like, you know, I, I don't know if you've noticed in the Renat fights, he goes hard, he fights hard, he will gas a little bit towards the end, but he, like, he hugs his opponents and stuff at, in between rounds. Like, I don't like that. It's it's fucking weird. Um, but Renat's very good, so not a bad loss. I got to go with Brian Battle here. I think that the the pressure that he's going to put on Juset is not going to work out very well for uh, for air Kevin Jusse. So I see, I see a finish coming. I think it could happen because, you know, they, they have the same record 10 and two Brian battle loves getting in there and getting a little wild. I think he's going to try and upset this audience here in, uh, in France. And he probably gets the knockout around two. I'm going to go round two again for Brian battle knockout. Um, not super confident in that round, but I, I see a finish coming for battle. What do you think? Been back and forth with this one. You know, it's hard to see how Battle wins without knocking him out. I could see him out pointing him on the feet. It's just, it's hard to picture this fight without Kevin wrestling and being successful in it. I mean, it's hard not to see something similar to the Renat fight happening. And look at that Renat fight. He got absolutely demolished in that fight. You know, looking at the stats, he only landed three strikes. You know, significant at, at, at distance, which is outrageous, which is crazy. So it really tells you if you can out-wrestle Brian Battle, you can win. I think a good spot for this fight would be a decision only for Battle because he definitely knows how to survive on his back. And yeah, yeah it, it's hard. I def definitely would go with like a double method, maybe like Juset. Or Juice decision and uh, battle KO. But uh, I'm going to go with Kevin wins a decision. I think this is going to be one of the boring fights on the card. A lot of wrestling, a lot of clinch, a lot of takedowns from Juice. And uh, yeah, that's unfortunate because I, I like battle. I think he's the better fighter in my opinion. I just think Kevin has enough tools to, to just lay and prey on him. And I know anything close is going to go to Kevin here. Okay. Yeah, I love uh, I love Jared's whale bet a lot. 
we'll share that at the end. And the steamer is also something that is, uh, it's not a bad look. I think this is an easy card. You're saying that this is a tough one. Now I say that before we start betting on it, but, um, it seems easy on paper, you know, uh, Anthony Smith special. I got some stats for you real quick on Kevin Jusay. All right. Strikes landed per minute for Kevin Jusay, 8.23. That's high. And that's only in, in, uh, two fights. That's incredible, though. The striking accuracy is 55%, and he's absorbing 5.1 strikes per minute. So he's landing a decent amount, almost twice as much as he is absorbing. The takedowns, like he doesn't shoot many takedowns. So I'm not worried about the takedowns here. He's a kickboxer, city kickboxing guy. Even though he's French, he fights over there in, uh, or trains, I should say, out of New Zealand with all those guys. That gym has been very hot lately. Uh, even with the contender series, they're getting all kinds of guys in this year. Um, the, the takedown defense is, is a hundred percent for him. So it, it's just an interesting look that, that you were having there where, you know, Jusse would have to come in here and wrestle. I don't see him doing that. I think he's going to try and strike with, with battle. He probably is the better striker than battle from a technical perspective, but battle is just more wild. I, I think. I think he's definitely going to wrestle here. But battle's dangerous on the feet. He's getting better. I mean, you watch tape. You watch him beat up Angelusa and watch him quit. Yeah, I'm definitely going out there. If you're his coach, what are you telling him? You've got to go out there and wrestle. You're, you're, you are you want to – he gasses out later too. You want to take that power away. I think – You're saying battle you gasses? You coming out and wrestling. Yes, I think battle battle can get tired, especially after Juice wrestles for a little bit. I think if he extends the fight, it's only going to help Kevin. Interesting. Okay, so you're thinking what Juice decision? You said. Yeah, I'm thinking Juice decision. Not a bad look at In all. In a safe prop, it's any decision only. It's probably I guarantee you, it's probably minus money. Yeah, uh, props aren't up yet, but I I'm going to tell you, Kevin Juice decision only is probably. Uh, favorite bet. Okay. Yeah. Uh, I like this too, that, uh, that Jared's on the same method, the knockout round two. Um, so that's a, that's more reassuring for my side there, but, uh, and then we'll jump ahead here too to Brito. He's got Brito knockout round or su sorry, sub round one. And, um, you can take that one. The, the next fight is William go me versus Joe Anderson Brito. Uh, Wildly different styles here with these two. Love Brito here. I bet him early last week. I threw him in a parlay with the over one and a half in Ortega just just to try to get it in early because I thought it was going to go to minus 300. It hasn't, but it went up to minus 270. It was minus 250 last week. So I do like Brito here. I think he's the rifle favorite. On the main card spot, he's going to be motivated. And uh, I think he gets a win here. They're going to give him a, a, a ranked opponent. So yeah. I'm going to go with Brito. It's hard to pick a method here. It's very hard. He can win every which way, Brito. Yeah. I'm confident he can win a decision. I'm confident he can win by knockout. And I'm confident he can win by submission. Um, very hard to give a prop. Wouldn't tail a prop in this. But uh, I'm going to go Brito wins by knockout round three. I think he shows a lot of that cardio. And I think the damage is going to accumulate. And William Gomez is going to quit in round three. Yeah, I like that round three look. I hate this picture of Gomez here. I don't know why. It's annoying. It looks like a business picture or something. Like on his like company ID. It's It's a really weird look. Um, Brito's dangerous everywhere. Like you said, he is, uh, one of the more dangerous guys in this division featherweight. Um, yeah, let's see. Yeah. And they still are fighting a featherweight here. Gomi is just too timid on the feet. You know, um, he has that one knockout win, but this was not a knockout. Um, he like kicked Gamori or Gamori hurt himself or something. And then Gamori tried to call timeout for like the fourth time in a row in that fight. And Gamori got the TKO. Um, it was from, it says from a body kick, but it should have said opponent quit or retirement or whatever it says. Cause that's what happened. So Gomi doesn't have any knockouts in the UFC realistically. Um, he's only got three fights, but they've all been boring. Took Francis Marshall to a split decision. Uh, Francis Marshall came back. He's looked good since he, uh, lost 
in his last, uh, there's two fights ago, I believe for, for him, Jarno Aaron's beating him by a majority decision. Um, I know you like Jarno. I don't think Jarno is really UFC level. Um, personally, that's just my, my humble opinion there, but yeah, dude, uh, the pressure is going to be too much for, for Gomez here. I think Joe Anderson's going to come in there. He's going to start throwing, he's going to throw a strike in the first 10 seconds, probably land. Uh, he's got the combinations. He, I, I could see him really like overwhelming him with punches, shooting a takedown when Gomez is backing up against the fence, getting it easily. Ground and pound could come from there, submissions, whatever. So it is tough. I had knockout round two marked down again. One of those is bound to hit three in a row, but I'm going to switch it to a sub in round two. Um, Probably some kind of choke. I think Gomez probably gives up his back, getting up a little sloppy, and Brito links in that choke in round two. So give me that. Interesting matchup, though, for sure. Because you'd think that they'd want Gomez to win, but that's a tough, tough fight for him. I think it's, yeah, way too big of a step up for him. Like, think about that. He borderline lost that Aaron's fight and borderline lost that Francis Marshall fight. Yeah. Um, I did bet on against Giannis, but... Th- this is a whole different ball game, in my opinion. You got a guy who can hit you hard and power wrestle you. That it's last, just, I don't that think last Brito fight, dude. I don't know if you remember how that ended. That that dude's shin split open, like nasty, nasty. Do you remember that? Yeah, uh, Jack Shore. Yeah, yeah, it was disgusting. Um, but yeah, dude, Brito's just too dangerous. Um, it's a, this seems like a step down in competition for him a little bit too. I don't think I don't think too highly of Gomez. And I was actually pissed at that fight. Um, I did have Gomez, but I had him by points, so I was pissed because that should have gone to decision. I, I mean, you know, Gamori is is one of the worst in the promotion right now. So I guess I should have seen that coming. But whatever, you win some. Yeah, I got a win over Diego Lopes, bro. Who? Gamori. Oh, Brito? No, Brito win over Diego Lopes, the GOAT. Like this man's this man's is he even ranked? No, I don't think so. Uh it says he's 17 on topology, but that's not hundred percent accurate. He win honestly. over a top guy and he's not even ranked yet. This is a buy low spot on him, in my opinion. I mean, dude, look at some of these wins, man. Uh these are obviously before the UFC. He beat Chepe. And then he went from Chepe to, excuse me, to Diego Lopes. Somehow lost to Bill Algio after that. Beat Andre Feely. That's a good win. I mean, he's I mean, beaten Bill some Algeo good dudes. Jonathan Pierce. He choked out Jonathan Pierce. Like that. That's a that's an accomplishment because Jonathan Pierce is great on the ground. Um, he's got some good wins, man. And, and yeah, I agree. He needs a ranked opponent after this. And not talking like fifteen. I think he should get jumped up a good amount here, top 10, something like that. Cause the dude is, is dangerous and he's good. He's 29. Um, so him versus versus Dan Ige next. Perfect. That'd be dope. Yeah. I'd probably take him there against the Ige. Um, but yeah, now co-main event of the evening. You can have this one super fun fight. And and it matters a lot for the division and the middleweight, uh, division there. Nasruddin Imavov, Versus Brendan Allen, who's kind of turned into a bit of a weirdo lately, fighting uh, fighting people in casinos and stuff. But what do you think about this? I like Imovov here. It's hard to fade Allen, though. He's very passionate about getting all of his wins back. And, it, and it's tough like beating this guy because you know you're going to have this guy chasing you for the rest of your life. I mean, he's just really after Strickland, and I don't know. I think he hits a brick wall here. Uh, I think Imovov can beat him everywhere. I think he can out-wrestle him. I think he can beat him up on the feet. I think he's the better, cleaner striker. But it's hard because Brendan Allen's been showing so much improvement every fight. And if he does get in those positions, if he happens to get Imovov's back, happens to get into on happens to get a couple takedowns and get in top control this fight could end fast and that's the only thing i'm scared about when i'm taking imovov is that alan alan's very likely to finish this in those positions and i think alan can survive on the feet you know this isn't going to look like how alan fought strickland where it's really don strickland's dominating him on the feet i think alan's really progressed in the striking since then 
Yeah. So I think he's going to hold his own against Imovov, keep it close. I'm just worried about those situations and those scrambles because I think Allen's really good in those positions. And uh, he shut me up in the past, you know. I bet against him a couple times on this win streak, and uh, I bet on him a couple times as well. But I'm just not a fan of him. I'm trying not to let my bias get into in between my bets. And uh, just using, you know, previous fights as measuring sticks, it's hard to not go with uh, Imovov here. He's the rifle favorite. I mean, they have so many common opponents. Just look how they use the MMA math. Imovov should win this fight. But it's just something, it's hard going against a motivated Allen. Yeah, but I'm going to go with Imovov wins a decision. I think he's just going to win more rounds on the feet, stop takedowns, and I think he clearly wins four out of five rounds. Is this a five-rounder? has to be, right? It should be just three. Um, it is a five-rounder. Yeah, I'm more confident in Imovov in a three-rounder, to be honest. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, everything that you're saying is correct. Um, Jared does have Imovov by decision, too. Um, I think Imovov's better on the ground, though. You know, I know that the sub threat is is definitely there for Allen, but Imovov, you know, he's definitely better at getting it there. I think his striking's decent. I think this is pretty even in the striking department, but I think where the edge uh, Nasruddin will have is in the pace and his technical approach. That's just kind of what I think. Allen does kind of fight with a lot of emotion. And I guess I heard that um, Shavkat Rachmanov gave Brendan Allen that hat that he wears, you know, like that raccoon or whatever the fuck it is. And ever since then, he's been undefeated. So that's kind of interesting, <sighs> especially if you like, uh, you know, if you believe in weird shit like that. But yeah, he's... Uh, he's if, been- I, if you're betting a double method on this fight, you have to take Allen by some, in my opinion, because he's just a better BJJ guy. I mean... Imovov doesn't have one sub on his record. Look how many subs Brendan Allen has. He's going to be the better grappler in this fight, and that's how he wins, in my opinion. Okay. Um, yeah, I mean, Allen has beat some good jiu-jitsu guys. Uh, Jacob Malkoon, Andre Muniz, Paul Craig. Paul Craig. I mean, Paul Craig's very one-dimensional, though. I just wasn't impressed with his fight against Chris Curtis. I think that a, a case could be made that Chris Curtis won that fight, to be honest. Like, it, it was very close. Um, I, I don't think very highly of Chris Curtis. Like, not him as a person. He's, he seems cool as fuck. But, you know, he's 31 and 10. He's very one-dimensional, Chris Curtis is. It's that same style that Sean Strickland has. Just march forward and throw simple combinations, single punches, things like that. And, um, you know, it was a split decision against Chris Curtis. Going from Chris Curtis to Nasruddin Imovov is tough. Like, that's a very tough matchup. So but look at it. Look at his fight against Chris Curtis three years ago in their first fight. He's come a long way from then. Sure. I just don't you think it's enough mean, for Imovov. You, I agree with you. I agree with you, but he still had time to improve. I think the fight's just going to be a little bit closer than we think. I don't think it's, it, it's going to be as a, a huge blowout winner as we say, but I would love to see Imovov knock him out. But, uh, I'm yeah. rooting for Imovov. Um, I hope he can get it done. You're scaring me with that hat conspiracy now. I might bet right. a little bit less after. He- I'm probably going to look into that now. There you go. Um, yeah, I have Imovov by decision. Same same reasons you guys do. Um, I think if this is close, they probably do give it to Imovov. Um, and yeah, a lot of people agree with that decision, it seems like, on Tapology. So for what that's worth, I usually don't love tailing topology, but sometimes it's pretty straightforward. And I think that's what this is. Now the main event again, fun one, because, um, you know, these guys are both on solid tears. Now I know Benoit lost his last fight to the best boxer in the UFC. I don't care what anyone says. Dustin Poirier is the best boxer in the UFC. It's not Max Holloway. I mean, fucking, uh, Dustin Poirier beat Max Holloway twice. So, uh, finished him one time too. So yeah, I think, with Moicano, got very lucky with his last one. Very lucky with his last one because Jalen Turner was stupid, dropped him. Um, I actually had Moicano in that fight, and I was fucking scared when I saw him drop like that. It looked like he was out, and uh, Jalen Turner just walks away. And then after that, you could tell that his he had that adrenaline dump. He wasn't he wasn't there anymore. He thought he was done fighting, 
And Moicano's a tough dude. He came back, got to take down, ground and pounded uh, Jalen Turner, which was pretty wild. Um, I saw the submission coming. That's the way I picked it. But yeah, Moicano is definitely, he's motivated. He says he can't lose because he needs the money and stuff. So I like that. I like that drive that he's got. And he he does seem to get it done when he needs to. He does everything he needs to do to set himself up. But his chin is concerning against a guy like Benoit St. Denis. Benoit is sick on the ground too. Um, not nearly as good as Moicano. Moicano is like one of the highest level black belts, I think, in the UFC. He's very good on the ground. But Benoit, dude, he's just got, I think he's got to take down defense. He's going to try and keep this a striking match on the feet. Moicano's technical enough to avoid some of those shots. But Benoit's got the chin. It didn't show in his last fight. Again, I think he had staff. I see round one, maybe round two knockout for Benoit. I think it comes very early. I think, you know, he's the first time main eventing in the UFC in front of his home crowd. This dude has a lot of like national, national pride, you know, served in the military. Supposedly, I, I don't know. I've seen the pictures and stuff, so shouldn't say supposedly. But yeah, he's a he's a bad dude. And Moicano's chin, I think, is going to fail him early here. I'm picking officially knockout round one for Benoit, but it could easily come in round two or three. Jared's got the round three knockout. Uh, but yeah, mark me down for round one knockout for the God of War. What do you got? What are you laughing at? I like that pick. I like that pick. Hard not to go with uh, St. Denny. It, it, it's hard, you know, but that momentum got stuffed. I, I'm with St. Denny. Don't get me wrong. That's the pick. I, I think he does get a knockout. I'm going to say round two. But let me just express, this is another fight. If I'm picking methods, double methods, if Dustin Poirier can get four submission attempts on you, you we might see a couple here from Renato. That's usually the method he's going to win by. A lot of BJJ opportunities this week. I think the double method here to go would be Benoit KO and Renato submission. It's a great way to look. I'm going to be betting a lot of double methods this week, I tell you that. But uh, it's a no-lose spot for either of these guys, to be honest, because just where they're at in the rankings, it's 11 versus 12. Pretty much you're fighting for an opportunity to fight in the top 10. But when you're fighting someone also ranked in the top 10 through top 15, it, it, it's fight's kind of pointless. It doesn't really matter. All you, You're going to get another opportunity after this. Both of these guys are. So... You know, it's not too much pressure on either of these guys other than to make money. Yeah, I think I think there's a, a you know, the UFC is kind of setting this up. And this is what they thought probably for Jalen Turner, too, after losing to I think it was Dan Hooker that he lost to before Moicano. Um, Moicano is not an easy bounce back for anybody, but the style says that this should be easy for for St. Denis. Um, I know that your boy, Matty Betts, is probably going to have some heavy action on. Moicano because you know co-host sounds like they're good like actual true friends awesome. and stuff that he's bet in the house yeah uh which I would not recommend um yeah if I have a friend fighting I'm probably betting some shit on him but it's not going to be a big bet uh if you know if I if I'm friends with Moicano I'm not throwing the house down on him here because it's a sketchy spot for him it's very tough and um yeah I think there's a bounce back spot just to kind of justify that Benoit should continue fighting up in the rankings I think they, I think Benoit could be a champion. Um, I don't think he beats Islam to be fair, but I think Islam probably moves up to 170 before uh, St. Denis gets, gets too close to that spot. I think him and Charles Oliveira is a sick matchup, dude. Benoit and Charles Oliveira is a dope matchup. Um, Chandler, any of these kind of crazy, you know, like high volume strikers and stuff, but yeah, dude, Benoit all day. It's easy for me here. Um, Anything else? You got the giggles over there. What are you laughing about? What's so funny? Uh, I'm just looking at Renato's record, and I'm just like, how did he? How did I lose money on Dober? He should have got that done. Scarring betting against Renato after you like lost against him. Yeah, yeah. I mean, he's got he's got some solid wins. Brad Riddell is decent. Drew Dober's good. Jalen Turner's good. Um. Lost to RDA. That's kind of a weird look. That's back in 2022, though. Alexander Hernandez. That's a bad. Oh, that's a good. Uh, he beat him. I thought he lost. Jai Herbert. 
I mean, he's losing to the top guys, realistically. Jose Aldo, Rafael Fazeev. I mean, these are solid losses if you're going to have to lose. But, yeah, dude, um, tough matchup for him, for sure. So, get into these whale bets and stuff. We're uh, wrapping up. Like I said, a little low energy today. So, sorry if it's, uh, you know, not not super high-paced and, and exciting like it usually is. But, you know, we, we recorded a little early today. Um so Jared's got the whale bet. I love this actually. Imavov and Brito, he's got it's at plus 100 for those two. That is a nice, nice, solid, confident pick if you're on those two fighters. And then his uh, like four teamer, what's that? I like that pick. Yeah, it's solid. Um, steamer that he's got is Altamirano, Kutalaba, Battle, and Saint Denis. That's at plus 600. So if you like all those fighters, that's some juicy odds for uh, for those. I know you're not on battle yourself, but it's a good uh, good plus money play there. You got any extra bets before we get out of here? I'm going to give out Matt Frivola money line. I'm going to, I'm curious on seeing a lot of the props and the overs and the alternate overs aren't out right now, which kind of upsets me. Uh, I would like to see the over one and a half in a Mavov Allen. I'd like to target that. I And a lot of the overs on the prelims are pretty juiced. Keep your eye out on the no distance in the Perez Daria. How do you even pronounce that last name? I think it's Zalyaznikova. Zalyaznikova? Yeah. yeah, keep your eye on no distance in that fight. Jared likes a KO in that fight. I like a KO in that fight. Keep your eye out on that. It's probably about 185. Okay. So, yeah. So that's a couple picks. Matt Favola, money line. Take the over one and a half and a Mivov, Allen. And to find a leg with that, you could even go Brito money line. As we're talking, Brito just hit minus 300 at a couple spots. If you want to get him in, get him in early. And, uh, yeah, maybe go Jacqueline Calvaganti money line. I like that spot, too. Now you could use that as a leg with the over one and a half in a Mavov. And probably get even money. Let's ride. I like that. I like that. Man, I'm looking at uh, Zalyaznikova's Instagram. She is... Very pretty. I don't know if mm. you can check that out, but uh, yeah, she is definitely a lot of these Russian girls are though, dude. Like, you know, they're just uh, what? What's up? Put it on the screen. Whip it up. I mean, want me to show you? Always need a little thirst trap. I noticed there was another show that I listened to that started doing this recently. I wonder if they stole the idea from us. Um, okay, can you see the Instagram? Oh, showing off, girl. I mean, dude, she's got she's got it all. She's pretty fucking hot, to be honest. You don't see that though when she's out there uh, you know, doing her shit. She's got I mean, she's got fucking abs, dude. This girl's built. But yeah, I mean, look at that. She doesn't look like a fighter right there. There's this top comment just says marry me. But yeah, I mean, that's And all it. the pretty girls been winning this year. They sure have. I mean, look, this is classy. Look at that. I mean, come on. So, yeah, a big fan, bigger fan of her now. But, um, yeah, we were on, you and I were both on Jackie there. Or, no, we're both on uh, Perez. But, um, I don't know. You'd like to see a girl like this do good, you know? You just do. So, we'll see how it goes. And she keeps it sand and she could probably get a finish. Probably going to have a little punt on the no distance here. You know, because that uh, we almost seen Perez got really lucky in that round three in her last fight because her eye was swelled shut, and they yeah, still she, let her go out there. She does gas, and yeah, I wouldn't see. Damn, I mean, she got a pretty good gas right there. Two, each round I don't know how yeah. she's still so hot after that, but uh, yeah, I mean, she's got an ass too. I I can't get enough of it right now, but I'm gonna have to pull this out. Uh, pull this out later. No, I'm just kidding. All right. So, yeah, fun stuff. I'm actually, you know, I said that I really liked uh, Jared's Brito Imovov pick there. I would go ahead and add mm -hmm. St. Denis to that, the, the money line or the finish for St. Denis. 
that's going to be pretty nice. You might get like plus 200 or close to it with that. So loving that. That's my only addition. But yeah, fun stuff, man. Uh, good luck on the card for everyone listening. And hopefully we make some money, man. Um, football has been a little rough to me. So I'm hoping that we can make some money back with the two fights this week. But good luck, everybody. We'll see you next week. Watch the uh, watch the video if you like doing that on Profit Picks YouTube. Go to T-Picks for some free picks. Um, you can always hit up Alex for his services as well. Keep listening to conspiracy shit on my feed too. But until next time, guys, good luck on this one. And then we'll see you for the next card as well.